Hello everybody, welcome back to a another video. And in this video, I'm going to be telling you everything's been added since and fixed in Minecraft Snapshot 24W6A. And this new snapshot contains a new item, but also some changes to previous features. So let's get into all of these amazing new features in the latest snapshot for Minecraft 1.21. And if you like Minecraft videos, like this one, then please make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Minecraft update videos in the future. Now this video is a live stream at the same time as well, which is why there's no editing, but it also means you get this video as soon as possible. So the new item in this latest snapshot is called the wind charge. And I have it in my inventory right here. So this is the wind charge. It is a, a new item and a new drop from the blaze. So let's get into this. Um, so what they say in the patch notes is that using the wind charge you can become the blaze. Using a wind charge will fire off a wind charge projectile similar to the breezes. So let's see that happening. There we go. This is what it looks like. You can hear the sound effect as well. And you can see there's a cooldown because all of those wind charges get a cooldown in my hotbar there. Then you can see you can fire off these wind charges and they travel in a straight line. So wind charge fired by the player will grant 10% more knockback than a breezes, but have a much smaller area of impact. So let's see this by actually getting some mobs here. So in this case, we'll get in some zombies and fire some wind charges at them. So we have an area of zombies. If we fire a wind charge at them, you can see that they take quite a bit of knockback. And of course, we can also activate these buttons. As you can see, for example, activating that dispenser or that one over there. That is all possible with these wind charges. So that is quite nice. So just like the projectile fired by the breeze, the wind charges fired by the player also deal damage if they hit an entity directly. So we can see that happening. We can deal damage like this, but it does not deal a huge amount of damage. You can see the zombie survives quite a few of these hits and so won't be... And so it won't be easily killed with using the wind charge. So how do you actually obtain this new wind charge item? It is because it is a drop of the breeze mob, which makes sense. It is very similar to the breeze. And so that is quite logical. So if we get a breeze in here and kill it, it will drop between four and six of these wind charges. So let's see that we summon in a breeze. And then if we kill it, just like this. There we go. If we remove our wind charges, we can see that in this case it dropped five wind charges. We can drop between four and six of these. And so the cooldown we saw before, if you use a wind charge in the hotbar, is actually 0.5 seconds. And these can also be fired from a dispenser. So if we put them in the dispenser, press the button, you can see we can fire these uh, as well. And in that case, activate the <laughs> dispenser on the other side if we hit those buttons getting an arrow into this direction. That is really cool. You can definitely do some awesome things with this because you can activate buttons using the wind charge. So players that launch themselves with a wind charge only accumulate fall damage below the Y level of where they collided with the wind burst. So if we can hit ourselves as well with this, you can see. Oh, now it's empty. Let's grab some more. But we can get knocked back to ourselves as well in that case. So if you fire this in survival mode, is there any difference? No, not really. Um, okay, that was almost me gone, but <laughs> there we go. So possibly with this, you could set up multiple dispensers and hit yourself with multiple wind charges in a row to get some, uh, some more height from it. But that would be quite interesting to see what people do with it there. So what else do they say? Uh, here's steps to 24W06A, experimental wind changes and optimizations for hoppers, among other changes. There's also a feedback website for the wind charges, which I'll leave in the description down below uh, after this video is uploaded. So you can give your feedback on this new item as well. And they've also made it change that the hopper will no longer try to pick up item entities if there is a full block placed above it. This will improve performance from many redstone builds, but will break some machines that write on glitching items into a block above a hopper. So what this means is that if you have a hopper and then a f any full block, like for example, one of these copper blocks on top, 
then the hopper will no longer check for items on this block up here. So this will hopefully reduce the lag of hoppers quite a bit. That would be nice. Then there's also a texture change of the vault. So the vault is now easily more easily distinguishable from trial spawners. So we can see a trial spawner up here for the, the breeze. And let's see if we can find a vault to see the difference in the texture. For that I'll go into spectator mode and just move around a little bit here. We should see a new vault somewhere here quite quickly. No, that's still a trial spawner. There's not a trial spawner. Actually not seeing any vaults. Which is a little strange. Because there should be quite a few of them in here. There we go, there's a vault. So that is now the new texture of the vault. Especially the top texture is new. And let's take a look at the texture it has when we get close. So this is what it looks like now. From all sides. And especially that top is different as I said before. If we grab a trial key, we can see the opening texture as well. So that looks something like this. This is what it looks like when it's open. We actually got diamonds, which is a rare drop here. And there it closes again. So yeah, they just gave, especially the top of the vault, a new texture, making it a lot different from the trial spawner texture, which is nice. Then beyond the new wind charge item and the vault, there's also some changes to the armadillo. <coughs> and so they say, they say that these are the final tweaks to the armadillo. So let's take a look at them. Let's get an armadillo. There he is. So what they say is that they've um, do not they, the armadillos no longer panic when damaged, but roll up instead and hide their head and feet. Ah, look at this. So this is what the armadillo now looks like when it's damaged. It's just the full block. It's not the head sticking out anymore. Wow! And there is an amazing animation there. That just looked amazing. Yeah, so what they say is the armadillos peek out to see if the coast is clear before unrolling. And there's new animations and sounds for rolling up and unrolling. The peek out animation as well. So that looks something like this. And then the unrolling looks something like this. Peeks out and then it unrolls. Of course they also get scared if we walk or run at them. Wow, yeah, those are amazing new animations. They look quite nice. So with these changes, the armadillo work is done for now. And we are switching our attention to the wolf armor instead. So they will change wolf armor more as well. So what they say is there's updates to tamed wolf health and damage. So tamed wolves will now have 40 heart, health points, 20 hearts instead of 10 hearts. So they have twice as many hearts. So let's grab a wolf and some bones. So what this means, this wolf over here now has 20 instead of 10 hearts, and they no longer take half the amount of damage from the environment uh, like they used to do. Uh, in most cases, this change will make no difference given the health boost, but they can now withstand more damage from players and arrows. And feeding a wolf will also heal twice as many health points as before. So that is very nice. Uh, then they've also added some sort of technical change. So they've now added a new option to select Japanese variants so for some characters. Which is useful for uh, people that use Japanese characters in their text. So that is a new change as well. And there are some further technical changes. So the data pack version is 31. The resource pack version is 26. As I said before, they've improved the hopper performance. And the maximum length of a command in a function can only exceed 2 million characters. And they've also reduced the amount of data sent by the server during login using re by re reusing parts of the vanilla data pack. So... Yeah, that's most of the, the technical changes as well. And just that armadillo animation is so amazing. I need to look at it again. Beautiful. All right. So yeah, apart from the, the new wind charge item and the armadillo changes, the technical changes and also the changes to the tamed wolf we saw before, there's of course also quite a few bug fixes in this snapshot. The oldest one that was fixed was snow golem snowballs damage wolves instead of pushing them. So snow golems will no longer damage your wolves. Very nice. And also Tamed Wolf Health will no longer reset when MBT is loaded with a relog. And there's a few more bug fixes you can read through. I'll leave the patch notes in the description down below if you want to read through them yourself. 
But anyway, there's everything that has been changed, added and fixed in Minecraft Snapshot 24W06A. If you like this video, then please subscribe!